Hi, I'm Amanda Skelton, an independent stamping up demonstrator. And today I'd like to show you how to make this lovely panel card. I cannot take the credit for this design. So I um, watched the YouTube video that Jan B did on this to create this panel card. It creates a six by six, or it can create a six by six inches card. And I've got three different colorways here. This one's just placed on. So I did this as a 3D, or one of my sort of like 3D projects in my workshop that I did recently. And we created this panel and then it could be mounted like this. So I haven't actually put the card behind it. I haven't stuck it together yet, but you could place that into a picture frame. So it could become a picture, which is just so gorgeous with the papers. Or here, I've mounted it onto a card. So um, I probably will put a sentiment down here. Happy birthday or something. So I just wanted to show, so this is what we're going to do, this sort of main panel. I have got the dimensions for the additional layers and the card if you want to make it into a card. So it makes uh, a card that is about um, five and three quarter inches by five and three quarter inches. So the finished card and that'll go into a six by six envelope. Um, so this is using the New Horizons uh, design series paper. It's just actually expired in terms of it was in the catalogue that ended yesterday. But you can do this, you can make your own patterned background or you can find any other paper where you've got a really nice detail it, it, or it could just be a nice patterned paper that you like. Um, I'm thinking back to the poppies, um, I think it's the painted poppies designer series paper that was maybe from either six months or a year ago um, and that was really nice and that has something that has sort of like a design sort of like at the bottom and sort of changes as you go up is, is, is a perfect thing for it actually. Let me just get the catalogue because I think there is a paper in here that's new today. Today is the first day of this catalogue. Let me just find the papers for you. So I was thinking the Awash and Beauty papers would look quite nice because here, a bit like the painted poppies, you've got a design at the bottom and then it's clear at the top. So you, it works quite well where you've got something graduated. Let me just see if there's any others. Um, possibly the Hues of Happiness. Um, but that was the main one that I was thinking for this out of the papers that are in, in this catalogue. Um, but you can always do your own background, um, you know, so you can always do some uh, blending or, um, like I said, you can or take a picture, even if you've got a picture or a, a nice image for somewhere else, you could do this. So um, we're going to just do the panels, but as you can see, I've, so I've stamped on here some birds and on this one I've um, blended on a sunset and on this one I've added a boat and I've put that 3D so it's on sticky um, pads and then this one I'm probably going to add on here I'm going to probably add a nice little um, dragonfly um, what I might also do and you want to do it before you actually mount it but if you're going to stamp anything you want to do it when it's in its panels format um, so yeah so I might even do something like add the, the flowers or something onto here afterwards but I wouldn't do it afterwards I'll do it when you're making the card Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. Like I said, it's it's a lovely, lovely design and you could do it with anything really. This is just to give you the ideas. So let's get rid of those. Okay, so what do we need? So I'm just going to put this piece of paper down here and then you can hopefully take a note of all of the, the details. So we're going to need some coloured cardstock which is three and five eighths by five and a quarter inches. Some patterned paper, which is three and a half inches by four and a quarter inches. And I'm sort of doing it horizontally. Um, and then we're gonna cut them down in a minute. So I shall leave this here so you can get all the cutting uh, dimensions, but I will go through it with you in a minute. And then if you want to mount it, then you need a piece of card, which is five and, um, sorry, five and, three eighths by five and three eighths and then you want a piece of coloured card behind it again so if you want to do this um you want coloured so your white card here is five and three eighths by five and three eighths 
your coloured card is five and a half by five and a half inches and then if you want to do the actual card itself then you want eleven and a half inches by five and three quarter inches and score it half at five and three quarter of an inch okay so okay let's take that away so we're going to use the scoreboard not the scoreboard the um trimmer a lot on this and i will go through it because it looks like a lot of numbers and dimensions and things but if i show you how i actually organize myself to cut it it makes it a lot more simpler so we've got so for our panels we just need these two pieces of paper so our colored card which is measuring um three and five sorry yeah three and five eighths of an inch by five and a half inches and then your dsp which is three and a half inches by four and a quarter inches now because i took this off of some existing a designer series paper um what uh, jan did which i thought was quite a good idea is she made a frame um so the actual frame um card of this itself is five and a half inches by six and a quarter so it's actually um two inches bigger in both directions than the piece that we want to cut out and then you want to measure in an inch from the top and measure an inch from the left and the right and the bottom and you want to cut out a square so you're going to end up with one inch either end either edge to make a frame and then what you can do is if i give this as an example so this is another piece of the dsp what you can do is use that to place it to see which part you want to actually get for your picture okay now remember that you're going to be cutting off these bottom sections so you don't want to have it too low you want your horizon probably about a quarter of the way up i would probably say a quarter to a third of the way up depends on how much sky depends on how much water you might want depending on if you're going to add um boats or if you want to add more detail to the sky so yeah i would probably say about a quarter and three quarters roughly or a third or even you could even yeah go to about a third and two thirds okay so that's how you can use that which is quite useful okay so we have our um pieces of card so starting with your card so i've already pre-cut this to uh five and three eighths by um five inches right let me yeah i can do it this way okay i might need to get above it sometimes to make sure my measurements okay okay so with your long side along your um level edge here you're basically going to cut strips in the right um widths okay so that's what we're going to do first so we're going to cut these at two and an eighth of an inch no i'm not sorry five and an eighth of an inch sorry five eighths of an inch so that's four eighths that's five eighths okay and we want two of these so i'm going to do another five eighths okay and if it helps i'm just going to place these at the side here so you want two of those so if you can see on the card we've got two here two here two here and then one in the middle so that's what we're aiming for so i've got two of the outside so it just makes it easier to work from the outside every time, especially when we come to the patterned paper in a minute. Um, and then we're going to do two cuts at three and a quarter inches. So that's your three and a quarter inches. Don't worry about the heights at the moment because we're going to sort that out in a minute. And another three quarters of an inch. Right, so this might not be absolutely accurate because I can't go above it to see exactly what I'm doing. And then we want another two at five eighths. Just placing those in the middle okay now you're probably gonna have a bit left over but the middle section needs to be one and an eighth one inch sorry one and an eighth inch so one and an eighth sorry let me do it from I'm gonna do it down here one and an eighth okay so the piece that you'll have started with will be slightly bigger than you need. It's just an easier way to, for me to have 
giving you a measurement. So you can end up with a little bit left over, but that's pretty much what you're going to have. OK, and then keeping them in this order again, we're going to work in pairs from the outside in. So it's a bit like your uh, um, paper version of your posh knives and forks working from the outside in. So what we're going to do again is take it in pairs. So I'm going to take these two. And what we're going to do is then cut the length. So we want this one to be, these two to be two and an eighth of an inch. So two and an eighth of an inch down here. Get rid of that bit and I'm going to place them back in place. Two and an eighth inch. Oh, that wasn't very straight, was it? Let's hope that I over, let's hope I move that a little bit and I can, I think I've managed to rectify that one. Oh, come on. So I've just got a piece of card stuck in here. It'll probably affect the cutting. Right, okay. So we've got these two pieces and don't worry, they do look quite small, but they are meant to be. OK, so then we're going to work on the next pair. And these need to be two and five eighths of an inch. So two and four eighths, two and five eighths. And again, once I've cut them, I'm going to put them back into place. Two and five eighths. And then the last pair, they're going to be three and one eighth of an inch. So there you go, three and one eighth. Three and one eighth. And then you shouldn't have to do anything with the middle one because we already cut it to the height that the, this needs to be. So you don't need to change that one. OK, so there you can see you've got your outline of your um, panels. So let me just get rid of those pieces. And then again, I just keep those pieces all together. I'm just placing them off shot for now but put them all in the same order okay so now we're going to do a similar thing for the um patterned paper and this is what and on the colored card because obviously it doesn't matter where you're taking a strips from there's no pattern to it on this one what we're going to do in a similar way to that is we're going to cut off our strips but we're going to work from the outside so we're going to cut a strip off a strip and a strip and then it will leave a center section OK, so that's how, so we need to be careful. We need to, need to make sure that we cut them. And again, I will place them back in order. So on this one, we need um, we need half an inch. OK, so I'm doing it off of one side and I'm placing that one there and then I'm turning it around and I'm doing my next half an inch. And I'm going to place that on the outside there. And look, sometimes it's easy to work out the pattern and make sure that you get the pieces in order. If necessary, you can always label them. You can always count, you know, number them one to seven. OK, so the next sections you want are two pieces that are five eighths of an inch. That's four eighths. That's five eighths. OK, so again, I'm going to put them and turn it around so you get your other edge. Okay, and again, I'm keeping them in order. And then we want the last two, which are going to be half an inch again. Again, turn it around. Half an inch. Okay, then because we met, we started with that, we should then end up with a piece that's an inch long. Sorry, an inch wide, which is correct. Okay. So because this was the exact size that we needed to cut down, the card wasn't quite. OK, so in the same way as we did it with our card, we're going to do cut down these. But in the same way that we had to work from left to right for the pattern in terms of going cutting down here, we're going to have to do our height. We're going to have to do our cutting on both uh, top and bottom in order to get the centre line um, centred. OK, so we've taken the two outside pieces 
we're going to take off three quarters of an inch off the top and the bottom okay so it seems a shame to be cutting up this lovely paper so three quarters of an inch and again i'm going to place it now then which one was that was that the left or the right that was the left in fact you can see that yeah so again just be careful take one at a time if you want to so this was three quarters of an inch So you can just see you get a piece of the, the bottom pattern. Right, so the next two outside pieces I'm going to take do one at a time so I remember to put it back in the right place this time. Uh, we're going to cut a half of an inch off. So it basically goes three quarters of an inch, half an inch and then a quarter of an inch off of those three sections. So we're doing our half inches. So that's that one. I'm going to do that one. So those who came to my workshop recently, you'll be pleased I did all this cutting for you. And then the, sec the last pair, you want to take a quarter of an inch off. So that was a quarter there. So you're not taking much off of these ones. But it's just enough to give it that really nice staggered look. So again, the middle piece is the right height because we started off with that right height. Okay, so I'm going to just place those on top of the backing papers and then we can get rid of that for now. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of how we um, did that. So I've got my backing piece here. Uh, which is um, five and three eighths by five and three eighths. So let's bring these back on. Basically, want to adhere the patterned onto the onto the background cards. So if you want to use gl uh, liquid glue, please do. Um, I'm going to go with it, with the double-sided. You want to make sure, as much as possible, that it's straight. You'll notice if it's wonky, because they are straight panels, you'll notice. Okay, so I'm just going to go and do each of these. And again, I'm, I'm keeping the papers in order just because it helps to keep you organised. I'll do two strips on this one. This point it doesn't matter if you've stuck anything up the wrong way because you can just turn the whole thing around but try and keep it the same way and it will just make it so much easier in a minute okay last piece So you should get quite a nice surround with the card there. So you can obviously pick colours that complement the pattern that you've chosen. So you can see how it's going to go here, like this. So tiny gaps, but there is a little bit of a gap. And to put it together, I would 
uh, suggest, again, you keep all your pieces in order. Um, and what I would suggest you do is measure halfway along. So halfway along is two and 11 sixteenths of an inch. So two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, that will just help you to centre. You can do a line down if you want to. That will just help you to centre your first piece. And I would work from the middle and work out. And what I would do first is I would place all of your pieces on because then that will help you to gauge where they go, how much space you've got between them. And you also want to make sure that the pattern on the picture, you keep your sort of horizon and you keep your pattern flowing. If necessary, if you run out of space at the edge, you can always have it going right up to the edge, or you can have an edge at the um, you can have an edge at the side, depending on how much space you've left. But you really don't need very much space at all. And by placing it first, you'll realise just how little space you have. Okay. So, in my opinion, so I I'm I don't think I did for any of mine. I don't think I ever measured like top and bottom. I can see that that is. But then if you want to put a sentiment or something, then actually it's quite nice if it's a bit higher up. Um, so I am going to move it all down a little bit because I can see that it is bigger at the top. And you're not going to no you're going to notice more that your panels are not straight. And you're also going to notice more whether your um, your line of sight along your pattern is doesn't match up as well so something like this where you've got quite a straight line is a lot more you're going to be a lot more noticeable if you don't have that straight than if you have one of these higher for example if that, that one is higher than that one for example but your eye doesn't really draw to it it'll draw to the picture okay so i think that that is probably about right so I'm going to, so if I was going to um, do any stamping on it, I probably should have said this, um, you would have wanted to have done it when it was still in either its solid state or um, when you've cut your individual pa uh, sections before you stick them onto the backing. And I would just place them back together and then you can see, because it's quite difficult when you haven't cut the, when you haven't cut the sections out, it's quite difficult to see where you want your focus to be on the pieces that are left so i would do it at that stage i did on this one i think what i did was i did push all the panels together so i got rid of all the gaps and i did do some um birds on it um without um at, at this it's this stage um i'm not going to on this i don't know if i'm going to use I was going to do it with that, but I don't think I am. I don't know what I might do. I've got a tree here, but maybe, maybe in green. Oh, actually, that looks quite nice. Yeah, um, I do like the birds. Um, so that is from the Sailing Home, which is um, just retired as well. But you can find there's quite a lot of things with birds on. Um, so am I going to do birds? So the other thing, actually, now I think what I'm going to do, Dragonfly Garden. So that is what I got the dragonfly out of, this dragonfly here. And there's a punch that goes with it that cuts it out. Um, maybe I will use that one. Um, there's like little butterflies on here. Uh, and there's quite nice flowers there. So I think I might do these on this one. So I'm just going to take the middle sections off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put them really close together. And if I do it in a pink colour, you're not going to notice if I go onto the backing card. Okay, so I didn't prepare to uh, do this piece, but let's have a go. So, which way up? 
and kits that way up. So, um, so I've got um, Fresh Frasier. Um, and I don't know if it will be dark enough. Let's have a go. Right, so I've got some paper that I had left over here. Oh, it will be dark enough, look. But because it should be the similar colour, so I'm just going to... There you go. Okay, ideally you wouldn't have it on your backing paper, but because I did it the wrong, the wrong way round, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Not too. You don't notice it too much. You, again, your eye line is drawn to the pattern. Um, and I might add something like that. And I think I might add, I think I might add a green tree to it as well. Anyway, so once you've got your pieces roughly in place, I'm going to take each panel off. And I'm going to, again, if you want to use liquid glue, which will give you a lot more control over its manoeuvrability, then I'm going to do that. I think that's about right there. Again, I do most of my things by sight rather than measurements. And then I'm just going to place each one. But again, I'm going to have a very small space. Just enough to give it a bit of an outline. And because we've got these butterflies as well, you want to make sure that they just about line up. Same on the other side. Again, I'm going to do tiny lines. And again, you want to make sure it's straight because that's what you're going to notice more. In fact, it wasn't until I looked at something, one of the other ones I did, that I realised it was slightly skewed. I don't know if it was on this one, actually. Slightly skewed. Um, but again, you don't really notice because you're... Oh, don't put that one upside down. Um, you don't really notice because you're drawn to the picture. So, again, try and have an equal line between your images and your strips of card. And then the last one here. So you can see at the top of that, it's all at the top of that, really. There you go, and there you have your panel. You can then get rid of your cheat pencil marks. Okay, and you can add sentiments to it. You can add your 3D elements to it. Um, maybe that, yeah, I've, I've done it in sort of more girly colour, so maybe something like that might be nice, or even a butterfly. And maybe a tree, I might do a green tree there, die cut it. Um, and then maybe a sentiment along the bottom. Um, so there you go. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed that card today. Um, as always, you can find um, the products at www.amandascraftedcards.stampingup.net. If you ever need any help, please do contact me and uh, I'll be happy to help you. Until I see you next time for crafting, take care. Bye bye.